So if you're joining us today, welcome. And if you're joining us on a recording, welcome as well. We're glad to have you. Today we are here to talk about what is the Texas 190 BT LPT. And before we introduce our presenter and everyone that's here with us today as well, I'd like to give you a few logistics about our webinar. So we are recording the session and we will send the recording of this to all of our participants who are registered, along with the slides that are that complement this webinar. So thank you for joining us. And if you are here, please chat in the chat feature and be sure that you're chatting with everyone and not just the panelists. So there's a little feature that can allow you to adjust who you're actually chatting along with. Should there be a Zoom failure, please meet us on the sidelitseducation.com website and click on the webinars tab and we'll give you information about what to do and how to join up again with us so we can continue the webinar. If you like to tweet on Twitter, our hashtag is SidelitsEdChat. And you can just take snapshots of everything that Dr. Morales is sharing with you and tweet them out so that you have documentation of, of what you've learned or if you just want to share with everybody. So without further ado, I'm going to pass it on to Anna Mattis. All right. Good morning, everybody. It is my sincere pleasure to be able to introduce Dr. Patricia Morales to you. She is no stranger in the field of bilingual and ESL education. I see a lot of you have already commented that she has been able to come out to your districts all over the state. So if you're familiar with her ESL certification, as well as the vast majority of preparation courses that she does, she is wonderful. And we're so very, very lucky to have her join our team. She's a new member with us, and she's going to be joining our bilingual team and helping to support the work that our phenomenal consultants are already doing in the field with dual language teachers. So we could not be more excited to have her with us. And I'm going to let Dr. Monica Lara share some extra special words about her too. Good morning, everyone. Por supuesto, no podría faltar la introducción en español a la gran doctora <laughs> Patricia Morales, una gran colega y amiga personal. Uh, ella se une al grupo de Silets para complementar nuestro equipo bilingüe y bicultural. Ahora Silets tiene un grupo más grande para poder apoyar las aulas duales en sus escuelas. Así es que las dejamos con, con uh, la doctora Morales, quien no es extraña para ustedes, y ahora parte del grupo de Silets. Doctora Morales. Yes. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, I'm so happy to be here today and collaborate with everybody. I'm so happy to be part of this team. Um, uh, well, I'm going to talk about the BTLPT, which is, you know, the acronym is still kind of weird for everybody. Some people used to say to me, Patricia, what are you talking about? BTLT, HEV, BTLPT, but it's actually BTLPT, Bilingual Target Language Proficiency Test. So we have this in Spanish for teachers who want to be bilingual certified. So it's one of the requirements at the state level. And the actual uh, site um, where everyone has needs to go to register is on the left side of the screen. Uh, we have Pearson, as everybody know, Pearson is our vendor since 2018. So to register, um, the teacher will have to go to that site. So I will also give you more information at the end of this presentation. You also see uh, the book that I normally use when I do this training. And this is a book that has a lot of practice for teachers. Uh, it comes with an audio CD, which is very helpful because you know you can, um, as, as a participant, you can um, actually uh, practice at home or sometimes uh, when you're driving, whatever you're doing, you have the audio CD that comes with the book. And I will give you also more information about the book and the resources at the end of the presentation. 
All right, now we're going to see actual, uh, we, uh, uh, we, uh, our content objective and our language objective. So as a content objective, everyone, what we're going to be doing today, we will review the format, domains and expectations of the BTLPT Spanish. So I will have to give you more information, some resources, maybe some recommendations in case that, um, you know, you know, teachers who are taking the test or you will uh, be working with those teachers taking the test. Our language objective today, we'll, uh, we will write a reflection in the chat box using the following sentence stem. At the end of our presentation, you will be able to do this uh, in the chat, uh, use that sentence stem. And you know, as Silex promotes academic language and language objectives are very, very important. So we are including these also on our own presentations. All right, we're going to go to review the standards. Uh, this is an important part of the test. Um, we, this is a language test. So it covers listening, speaking, reading, and writing. Uh, like help us, but in Spanish. <laughs> so the listening component, uh, I'm going to show you in a minute the number of uh, questions and how uh, teachers will have to develop this area. But we have a receptive component that has to do with listening and reading and a productive component that has to do with speaking and writing. So that's why sometimes this test is a little bit more difficult uh, because you have to be able to construct and write, right? as well as speaking, it's very, very important. So these are the BTLPT standards and we're gonna see all the components on the next slide. All right, so the, the domains are actually, um, uh, they, they have uh, two sections. So we're gonna focus on the receptive part of the test. And the first part is listening comprehension. This is actually 21% of the test is important, like all, all of them. And um, teachers are going to have to uh, answer to 36 multiple choice questions, but only 32 will be scorable. That means that some of them are not gonna be evaluated and they don't count when they actually uh, assess the final score. This is about 50 minutes. Um, on the next slide, you are going to see that um, this is one of the areas where uh, teachers won't be able to come back because it's actually timed. So they're going to hear uh, uh, nine selections. Each uh, selection will be played twice. And then uh, they're going to have 40 seconds to preview the four questions. Now, when they have the 40 seconds to preview the four questions, they will be able to actually see the questions on the screen. And at that moment, what I normally recommend when I do my trainings, and we do a lot of practice, of course, with this part and the rest, take notes. Notes are very, very important because, because on the second time that you are actually hearing, the tape again, you won't be able to see those questions. So your notes are very, very crucial at this point. Then after that, uh, after you, you, uh, the teacher hears this for the second time, they will have to respond to four questions. So this is, um, you know, kind of in a nutshell, how the listening, listening comprehension is about. Now, selections are normally, you know, um, normally they, they focus on vocabulary that bilingual teachers are supposed to know to teach science and math and social studies. So all of them are, are self-contained. So there's nothing different or difficult. You know, most of the, uh, most of the vocabulary is actually part of the bilingual and dual language programs. In the book um, that I show you at the beginning, I have a bilingual dictionary for them in English and in Spanish by content areas, because it's very important to you know um, refresh or familiarize again with the vocabulary. All right, we're going to go to the next slide, and the second part of the uh, component number one, section one. This is productive. And this is going to be the oral expression. This is 29% uh, everyone. So this is actually very, very important too. Uh, teachers here will have to um, produce four tasks. The first task is a simulated conversation. I'm going to show you step by step how this is. Uh, then they will have to do two questions and answers. 
and then the oral presentation where, where they will shine talking about a specific topic, topic. And the last task that they need to do is support a situation and or opinion. So this is about 20 minutes. Everything is timed as well. So teachers won't be able to go back and review. They have to actually do it and use the time. So let's review the first task on the next, next slide. So right here, we have task one and two. And on task number one, simulated conversation, it's like a real conversation with, with someone. So when we do our practice uh, during our trainings, I normally uh, tell teachers, you have to think that you are talking to someone, even if you have a pen in your, in your hand or you're looking at yourself on the mirror or something, you have to you know, make sure that you are doing this in a very natural way because teachers will have only four turns to respond. And each time they respond, they have to record uh, 20 seconds. So you have to kind of focus on the answer. Um, it's only 20 seconds each turn, 80 seconds total. The second task is two different questions. Uh, teachers will be giving a scenario and they will have to answer uh, some of the questions. Normally the instructions are in English, but the questions are in Spanish. So taking notes again, it's a very important strategy that teachers uh, taking this test need to follow, taking, taking uh, notes. Uh, the second task, um, actually they have a little bit more time and uh, they're gonna have one minute to prepare and one minute to record. So even though one minute is not a, a, a lot of time, but to record for one minute is, you know, it's a, a lot of time sometimes. So let's go to the next slide. And we have task three and four. Task number three is uh, an oral presentation. And right here for both of them, three and four, uh, teachers will have two minutes to prepare. I normally uh, tell them when I do my trainings, use this time because it's two minutes. Make sure that you, you know, write down all the, 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 the details, supportive details, the main idea, or maybe bullet some of the academic vocabulary that we'll be using. All that is really important when they are preparing uh, during those two minutes. And then of course, two minutes to record. So at this point, I normally give them a lot of strategies. We have those in the book. Uh, begin with uh, a preamble or you know, saying thank you for inviting me. They can actually play a little bit with that and to use those two minutes. The, the, the last one that they have to produce orally is an opinion or give a solution. And I really want to let you know, um, I don't think I did at the beginning, that this, this test focuses on content. So it's very important to actually uh, answer the question and focus on the situation that we'll be giving, you know, to the participants, to the test takers. It's not like the, the uh, actual TOPT that we had before we created this test. And I say we because I was part of the writing, um, the writing team. And um, the, the, the test focuses on the four areas and it's bilingual target. So it means that we need to actually focus on the content. We cannot create something new uh, right here. We have to actually answer uh, the question or focus on the situation. All right, let's uh, go to the next slide. And we have section two, the reading comprehension, 26% uh, of the test. Um, teachers will have to answer um, 48 multiple choice questions. And right here, they're gonna have 70 minutes. And this is not timed, so they will have time to go back and review. And I always give them a lot of strategies on how to also uh, review the questions instead of reading the whole thing, maybe just focus on the question. So we, we actually practice a lot when we do our trainings for the reading comprehension piece. We're gonna go to the next slide right here. And we have section two, the written expression. And um, based on my experience, everyone doing this training, and um, I believe this is the most difficult one for some teachers. So 
and in the book I gave them a lot of templates and examples because um, you know writing in Spanish um, is, is going to be part of this test. So sometimes when we are in bilingual programs or dual language and we talk to a colleague, we normally do a write in English, but this is uh, the part that covers Spanish um, writing. So we have three tasks right here for the teachers. They have to respond to either a letter, a memo, or an email. Then they have to create a lesson plan. I'm gonna give you the details in a minute. And the last one that they had to do will be uh, write an essay. And um, it has to be a, give an opinion or position about a specific scenario. And right here for everything, for the three tasks, they're gonna have 70 minutes. So let's see how uh, just the first one look like on the next slide. Uh, task one, respond to letter, memo, or email is one of them. It's not the three of them, it's just one. So a uh, letter, memo, or email. So right here, an effective essay will contain a minimum of 50 words. This is very important, everyone, because words are going to you know, be very important for the evaluation. So um, we need to make sure that we're not creating just 49. It has to be 50 or more. Um, so right here, they're going to, teachers are going to read the message and they are going to write their response. So it focuses on the actual memo, email, or letter that is given to them. Let's go to task number two, an essay. So they have to write an essay. The, the, the minimum um, uh, will be 150 words. So that's what an effective essay um, will contain, 150 words. So that's also important to remember to fully address the task. So position or opinion, same thing, you read the scenario and then you write your response. So that's um, primarily how this is all about. And the last one, um, task number three on the next slide. This is the one that sometimes uh, takes a little longer and when I do uh, my trainings, we do a lot of practice right here with this part because I've seen that teachers sometimes, um, you know, fail some areas. So, and not because they don't know, they're awesome. It's just because we really need to address, you know, the task. So let's see what is actually provided. They give you the topic, they give you the objective, and they give you the content area what teachers need to do, what you need to include, the school grade, vocabulary that you're gonna use in your lesson, materials that you're gonna use in your lesson, description of procedures and activities. So this is important. This is like a real lesson plan written in Spanish. All the description and activities, and of course, an informal or formal evaluation. So, to fully address this, we really need to focus on that. We don't want to write something different that is not required. And I've seen sometimes that teachers call me and say, oh, Patricia, you know, I got um, like a bad evaluation and I wrote a lot. And when I review, I see, yeah, but this, this is not what they requested. So you really need to focus on school grade, vocabulary materials, description of procedures, and the, the evaluation. Those are the, the ones one, two, three, four, five components that you have to complete and create. All right, so let's go to the next slide. This is the scoring rubric summary. This is just a brief summary that I, I created um, for this presentation. What is important here, everyone? Topic relevance, again, we have to focus on the topic. Supporting details, accuracy, content information appropriateness. We are not going to talk or write about something that is not part of the task. That's very important. That's why this is a bilingual target language proficiency test. And um, we have four scores, um, three, two, one, and zero. Of course, we want a number three. We have to focus on that three right away. You can do it and you will do it, right? Teachers can actually do a great job. Um, let's go to the next component, Valentina, task completion. Um, task completion means uh, the teacher fully addressed 
and completed the task. That means, for example, if they ask you to answer or give two details, you have to give at least two details, and not one. Because if you give one detail, they're not going to give you 100% of the task um, you know, as completed. So that's very important when you have a prompt or something like that, you have to actually review that. What are they asking me? They, get, they ask me to write or give two reasons. Reasons mean more than more than more than more than one. I have to give two or more, not less than two. Then let's go to language use. This is important. Organization is very important when you are actually uh, talking uh, and speaking in Spanish. Coherence, of course, vocabulary. Uh, right here, I want to focus on. Um, let's try to use academic vocabulary as much as possible because that's part of the expectations of the test. So in the book that I was uh, show you at the beginning, um, we have a lot of academic vocabulary that is going to help you, you know, for this test. Um, um, we are going to avoid, um, even though it's wonderful and, and creative and we're using it a lot, um, translanguaging or code switching, text max, Spanglish. <laughs> We're going to try to avoid that for this test because they, they want to measure actually your Spanish proficiency. Fluency will be important and pronunciation. Um, we're not going to talk in a very, you know, kind of slow way, but kind of the way we, we, we talk when we are teaching with that kind of movement that we normally use as a teacher. Let's go to the writing skills and let's see the expectations right here. Again, same thing, organization and coherence for uh, writing. Vocabulary, same thing. Registers, everyone. Registers are very, very important for this test. So I normally, you know, recommend teachers to focus on the formal register, usted, instead of tú. Now, if you want to use two, for example, if you began with two and you're talking to a colleague and you're saying, hola, como estas? Um, estoy muy contenta que estés trabajando conmigo. If you're going to use the informal, just go all the way until the end. Do not mix, because if you do, that, that shows a little bit of lack of proficiency in Spanish in this part of the test. So formal probably is going to help you a lot. Uh, if you're taking this test, usted, uh, because in Spanish we have that, especially when you are talking to parents or superintendents or whoever is part of your situation. And then, of course, conventions of the language, spelling, when we're writing acts and marks, everyone, we have that orthographic part of the language. Uh, in the book, we also have a lot of practice for los acentos, tildes, right? Whenever we want to call them, that is also part of the writing skills. Okay, so now let's go to the next slide. And here I put some resources. And what you can see as the official site is actually uh, the Pearson website where uh, teachers who are taking the test will have to go and register. Now, all the testing centers are open, everyone. And there are some precautions, of course. Teachers will have to wear a mask and and, um, you know, there are more probably regulations that they're going to let them know or give them when they get there. But all the testing centers are open um, right now since I be, uh, actually they, they opened on May 1st. And I also put some information about websites that we normally use when we do trainings. I recommend those places, the National Geographic in Spanish, El Canal de la Historia in Espanol. I'm going to use this in Spanish right now. La Real Academia de la Lengua, RAE. It's a really nice place to go and review language and also spelling. They have a lot of resources. La BBC del Mundo in Espanol. Um, and also we have TEA, and, you know, in, in the area of academics, they also have the ticks in Spanish. So I recommend teachers to go and, and, and get that, download those ticks in Spanish, everyone. They are really, really good and they cover all the academic language uh, that we need to know as, uh, as an ESL certified teacher. 
So that's very useful. The book uh, that you see on, this, on the right side is um, my book, the book that I use, Prácticas de los Conocimientos y Destrezas del Lenguaje y Lectura en Español. Um, is, um, it covers all the areas for the BTLPT is my second edition. Uh, it comes with an audio CD that you can actually convert on, I think is MP3 or MP4. Some teachers have been doing that and to use it all the time on their computers. And it covers a lot of information that teachers will need to, to, to pass this test. It has a lot of practice in templates and um, examples of writing and, and all the area of uh, orthographia that we call in Spanish. So um, I think it's, it's useful when, when I do the trainings, each uh, participant gets a copy. So we use it and of course they, they use it at home. Okay, I think I'm probably done. All right, let's go, let's go to our content objective and language objective. And at this point, I would like to see if you can actually help me with this. I want you to write a reflection in English or in Spanish. Um, the information is useful because that's the sentence stem that I want you, I want you to use in uh, your chat box. I'm going to give you maybe one minute. Dr. Lara. <laughs> Doctora Morales, tenemos eh, un par de preguntitas para... Claro para que sí. Sí. Uh, uh, we, we'll do the questions in, in English and you can Absolutely. answer them in Spanish if that's okay. Uh, one of the questions that Rolando had was about the writing piece. He was asking, do they expect us to use the way you write in English, in Spanish, or are they really adhering to the way you write in Spanish? That's a very good question. What can uh, you it's a very that? good. It's a very good question, yes. uh, Rolando, right? Well, yes. um, we are talking about two different systems, right? Even though we have a lot of things in common between English and Spanish, um, you know, uh, in, in Spanish, we have a specific rules. So we have to follow those rules. For example, if you are talking, if the noun in Spanish is masculine, um, you know that everything will be masculine. For example, if I say el perro es uh, bonito, my adjective is masculine and my article is masculine. Everything addresses the noun. So sometimes, you know, um, uh, students, even when they are learning English as a second language, uh, they tend to put the S at the end of an adjective. For example, when they say beautiful children, which is incorrect in English, because even though children is plural, the adjective is not. But in Spanish, the adjective will be plural if we say los niños son bonitos. So everything addresses the noun. So we have to follow certain rules. And the organization uh, sometimes is a little bit different. So that's why uh, Rolando practice is very, very important for this um, writing component. Okay. I don't know if I answered that correctly. I mean, if I uh, address that the way he wanted me to do it. Yo creo que sí, porque recuerda yeah. que el inglés es más lineal y en español sí. escribes más circular. Entonces, Exacto. a lo mejor él se estaba también refiriendo a eso de la importancia de escribir uh, más como, mira, ahí está escribiendo. I was asking about the speech pattern more than the conventions. Oh, the speech pattern, like when, when you are talking. Okay, so uh, yes, uh, well, it's just kind of similar to English in a way, because if they ask you, for example, Rolando, ¿Por qué usted quiere trabajar en mi escuela? Eh, si yo soy la directora de la escuela y le pregunto a usted, señor eh, Figueroa, por ejemplo, ¿por qué usted quiere trabajar en mi escuela? Eh, yo tengo que conectarme con la directora en ese minuto y uh, utilizar un registro formal eh, y un lenguaje apropiado para ese lugar. Es más o menos como el inglés. Señora Pérez, bueno, gracias por invitarme a la entrevista. Eh, eh, estoy muy, muy contento de poder estar aquí hoy, hoy día. Y la razón por la cual yo quiero trabajar en la escuela es porque eh, ustedes tienen un programa dual excelente. Entonces, todo es muy parecido en ese aspecto a, al inglés. En realidad, no hay mucha diferencia. Lo que sí, um, yo uh, lo que siempre propongo es que lo tenemos que hacer todo en español. 
o sea, no, no podemos mezclar y poner palabritas en inglés, eh, que muchas veces lo hacemos, ¿verdad? Cuando estamos sobre todo con nuestros colegas bilingües que hacemos la creatividad que es maravillosa de lo que es translanguage, pero en este minuto todo sería en español. Ok, tenemos otra pregunta y estas son rapidito. Quieren saber, creo que Santa Mónica eh, fue la que hizo esta pregunta y me encanta ese nombre. Santa Linda, lindo nombre. Uh, si las claves de los acentos están accesibles o te las tienes que memorizar, o sea, si cuando estás tomando el examen, que asumo que lo tomas eh, en un teclado en la computadora, sí, ya hay que... los acentos te ayuda o tienen una clave? Eh, claro, por ejemplo, van a salir las letras, las vocales, van a salir ya con el acento puesto. Ah, Entonces, okay. lo, lo que hace uno es con el cursor con, o con el, con el ratón, ¿verdad? Se va a la A. Por ejemplo, si está la palabra está, ella está comiendo. Ese está es el verbo y tiene acento. Entonces, yo pongo, tomo esa A y la llevo a la, a la palabra y, me, y creo la palabra está. Y hay un, una, una tutoría también en Peterson, uh, cuando, cuando los maestros se registren, pueden ir a todos los materiales que tienen, que están fantásticos también, y ellos pueden tomar como una tutoría de poder trabajar en esa parte. Eh, okay. No hay un spell check o algo que revise la ortografía, por supuesto, porque esto es algo que los maestros tienen que producir, pero sí solamente se toma la A, la E, la I, la O y la U, Recordemos que tenemos solamente cinco vocales en español y la llevamos a la palabra. También está la ñ, ¿verdad? O si hay diéresis, ¿verdad? Todo eso también se va a llevar a la palabra. Ok, gracias. También había otra pregunta, que ¿cuáles son los exámenes que tienen que tomar? ¿Nada más tienen que tomar el BTLPT o tienen que tomar y el BTLPT? Okay. Tienen que tomar el 164, que es el examen bilingüe. Ese yo también ah, lo, lo hago y tenemos un libro. Ese examen es en inglés, por supuesto, y es, es de contenido. Es como el ESL, eh, pero en este caso es bilingüe. Eh, tienen que pasar ese y el 190 para realmente poder estar certificados en educación bilingüe en Texas. ¿Y el examen es el mismo ahora que es Pearson? ¿Es el examen? ¿Es el mismo? Todos los, exámenes, todos los exámenes son eh, lo mismo. Los estándares no han cambiado en absoluto. Lo único que cambió fue, eh, digamos, el, el, la, el, la compañía que está trabajando con esto, que es Pearson. Antes de Pearson, nosotros teníamos ETS, que es cuando yo trabajé con ellos para hacer este examen. Ahora tenemos Pearson. Nada más, a siempre Pearson está haciendo, desarrollando más recursos, pero los okay. estándares son los mismos y el examen es el mismo. Sí, Stacy era la que nos estaba preguntando eso. Y tenemos sí. también una pregunta de Jessica. Pregunta que si esta cubre lo del lote, la del lote 613, o es diferente, eh, es, o el, el, lote, el lote es diferente, ayuda muchísimo. Recordemos que antes, desde 2007, teníamos el, el TOPT, Texas Oral Proficiency Test, y este es, eh, cubría todo lo que era español de secundaria y también educación bilingüe. Creamos el BTLPT en el 2007 y se creó el lote, eh, que creo que está también en alemán y en otros, en otros idiomas. Eh, yo, cuando hago los entrenamientos, he tenido maestras que van a tomar el lote y se han beneficiado muchísimo también, eh, pero sí en el futuro estar, estamos creando también esa parte para eh, presentarles, eh, digamos, específicamente lo que es el lote. Eh, yo en este momento no, no, no lo tengo específico como el BTLPT, pero es muy, muy parecido, nada más que ellos tienen que escribir el lesson plan en inglés, tienen la parte pedagógica también, que es la que yo enseño en el ESL. Entonces, les ayuda muchísimo en general, también para el lote. Y les digo que tú haces muchas prácticas en tu taller, haces muchas sí. prácticas para que puedan tomar preguntas como prácticas para prepararse. Por supuesto, muchísima práctica. Uh -huh. Sí. Esto es muy diferente a lo del examen ESL, porque también estaban comentando que si era... Uh, algo similar a lo de ESL, uh, no. Marilyn uh, estaba preguntando. No, el, el, que, es el, que, el que es similar al de ESL es el Bilingual 164. The okay. Bilingual 164 is kind of similar to the ESL 154, but of course you focus on bilingual education and dual language, but it's very similar. It's a content-based a content kind of, uh, you know, kind of test. 
but the 190 is it's just Spanish and you have to produce and receive language. So it's it's different, it's dis distinto. Okay, uh, and also, uh, the, you know, like we said, uh, Liz said the practices, you can do a lot of practices with Dr. Morales. Uh, sí. Thank you, Valentina and Ana. You know, uh, bilingual people have to give the explanation in a very, very long and elaborate way. So it's not <laughs> as direct. So that's just the way it works. But thank you for being so patient with the question and answer. No, absolutely. We appreciate everything that you shared. I learned a lot. And if you want more information from Dr. Morales, here is her contact information. You can reach out to her through email or through Twitter. This is her handle right here. And then, of course, this is the Sideless Education handle right below it. So feel free to contact her. I know she would be happy to hear from you oh, all. Of course. And then we offer a lot of uh, webinars and also some um, uh, billable uh, professional development that you can join us. So you can go to the sidelesseducation.com, upcoming events to learn about all the things we offer. We can turn a lot of our trainings that we've done face-to-face turn them into um, online offerings as well. Then next week we have two great offerings that you won't wanna miss as well. We've got Carol Salva doing supporting SIF during distance learning, which is sure to be a hit. And then we've got Dr. Stephen Fleener fostering interaction in online environments, also gonna be another awesome one. And you can learn about Dr. Morales's uh, presentation on Texas ESL 154, which I know a lot about, but I learned a lot about the BL. Tell me again the acronym. BTLPT. BTLPT. <laughs> I knew I was going to forget all the all the letters that go with that. And then in addition to that, we have three other upcoming offerings that are going to be amazing too, um, provided by Dr. Fleener and then Adrian Mendoza doing some math, uh, sheltered instruction in math online. So check out these offerings. I'm sure you'll find one that's just perfect for you and you'll want to attend. Those are all on sidelitseducation.com under the upcoming offerings tab. And if you wanna see some of the uh, webinars that we've already recorded, you can go on there and go to webinars and take a look at the past recording also. So we're really happy that you joined us today and feel free to reach out to us on Twitter and share what you've learned. Thank you all for joining us. And um, we've got our Sidelets Ed Chat on every first and third Tuesday of the month. You can join us on that, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. Check out our blog. We've got a lot to share with you on there as well. Lots of guest post writers and our regular writers too. And with that, we'd like to thank you all. Have a great day and join us again in the future. Bye everyone. Thank That's you so great. much. Bye, thank you.